Good day to you all. My name is Anya Light and I'm an intuitive life coach and a Reiki healer and a facilitator of amazing conversations. So hopefully today will be one of those amazing conversations and it already has been because I've had some um, pre-live conversations with some friends today um, that have been really great. So Okay, so today we are talking about platonic touch, platonic touch, and it's a subject I've personally never, have not yet talked about with anyone um, in a public fashion. It's um, a new topic that we're going to dive into, and I'm really, really feeling the call of spirit. I've been getting so many signs over the past couple days that this is really, really, really aligned with what a lot of people want to talk about right now. So I'm excited to hear your questions and comments. Um, I will address as many questions and comments as I possibly can towards the end of the presentation. So um, if you feel like I'm not paying attention to you right now, it's just because I'm doing my part. I'll say some stuff and then at the end, I will look at your um, feedback and respond to it. Okay. So today we're talking about, we're starting a conversation about platonic touch. So originally I had thought that this was going to be just a one-time deal, just a one-time Facebook Live conversation. But then as I started um, really tuning into this topic in prayer and meditation and conversations with friends, it became apparent this was way too big of a topic just to cover in one day one little brief th uh, meeting. So I'm breaking this into three parts. So today is the first of three parts and the rest are coming in following weeks. And I'll give you the um, details about when those specifically will be towards the end of the conversation. But just know that this is the first of three parts and each part successively builds on the next part. So today we're just going to lay the foundation and the groundwork for this topic and then in the subsequent two Facebook lives we will get deeper and more detailed into it so um, but each each of these conversations is going to revolve around the topic of platonic touch and today specifically the subtopic of today is breaking the taboos of touch so we're going to talk about society and some of the blocks and fears that might come up when we're engaging with this practice and topic. So that's what we're doing today. And I'm so glad that you're here with all of us right now, contributing your energy to this conversation. So to begin, I just would like to just guide us in a super brief meditation to align all of our energies together. I think that's really important. Um, so whatever you're doing right now, I invite you to stop. If you're multitasking or checking out other things online, I just invite you to stop just for a moment and close your eyes and bring your hands together in front of your heart. Take three deep cleansing breaths. And as you continue to breathe, I ask that we set the intention for what is said today to be of the highest good for all of us who are present and listening, whether that's live or later if you're listening and watching on YouTube, all of those who are present in this conversation, I ask that Spirit enter this conversation and guide us to exactly what's all in all of our highest good so that we all receive the message that we need today thank you okay now that we're tuned together huh, so what is let's start with some um, simple definition work what is the difference between 
platonic touch and sexual touch. You can answer this question in a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways. Um, so for me, I'm going to start out by talking about it from an energy perspective because that's the perspective that I come at lots of stuff at. So for me, in my experience, um, a sexual touch is a touch that carries with it a certain feeling of grasping. And I don't mean this in like a negative way. I just mean it as in you're reaching, maybe I should say reaching, not grasping. That's better. We'll just X out grasping because that has some negative connotations to it. But um, it has a reaching quality to it energetically. Um, in a sexual embrace or a sexual moment between people, um, the touch tends to have this reaching quality. You're reaching, you almost feel like you're reaching into the other person because you want to get as close to them as possible. It's almost like a hungry energy. It's reaching, it's hungry. It's um, In some cases, it's like a devouring. Like, I just want to eat you. I just want all of you and uh, it's intensely passionate it's um it's comes with a very strong um just an intensity an intensity sometimes it can make you feel weak or even crazy like your brain is not functioning and you can't think of anything else and all of a sudden your lower chakras are completely vibrating and all you can think about is just getting naked with that person <laughs> and um, just licking every part of them and smelling every part. And, and, and this is a specific energy. I mean, this is not something that you feel for everybody that walks down the street. Um, someone that you have intense sexual passion for, you know, all of a sudden you find yourself having these daydreams about you doing the darndest things with them <laughs> that you would not do with, you know, 99% of the other people that you meet on a daily basis. Um, it's extremely intense. It's an intense energy. It's intense. And like I said, it's like a reaching quality. It's like you're, you're reaching, you want to reach almost into their soul and explore every single part. It's, um, like, uh, again, to say the hungry analogy or hungry wording, it's like you're sitting down and you haven't eaten in like two weeks and you're starved and then someone puts food in front of you and you're like, har, har, har. that feeling, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so it's this, um, this, that is sexual energy, okay? Um, that's sexual touch. Platonic touch is a different thing altogether. Um, although, to be fair, it does sometimes interweave with sexual touch and sexual energy, but we'll talk about that in later, uh, maybe probably the third part of this series, because um, it gets a little interesting to negotiate that. But... Um, but for the most part, platonic touch, platonic energy is an energy that is very light and soft and floaty. It's like you're floating on a cloud energy. Um, you don't really feel the ground beneath you. You're just kind of like airy and there's lots of space in between the molecules of your body and... Um, it's not a reaching or a hungry energy. <clears throat> it's more of a receptive, playful, um, friendly energy. <clears throat> it is an energy of light and joyful exploration. Um, it is an energy of giving. It's very... Uh, um, it's very much about giving. Sometimes sexual energy can get into um, wanting to receive a lot. Um, tonic touch can very much easily be such a giving and 
um, selfless kind of an energy to it. Um, there's a definite bonding element to the platonic touch, but it's not as ferocious as the sexual touch. Um, it's lighter. Um, and, you know, with sexual passion, sexual touch, sexual energy, there can be these um, attachments that we make uh, to the person that we're touching. Um, with platonic touch, there is not that same um, potential for clean attachments. It's more of a clean um, or potential to be um, clean and pure energy. And I'm not saying that sexual energy is like dirty and contrast by any means, but I'm saying it's platonic touch is less fraught with um, downfalls of um, of getting very um, attached to the person that you're touching, if that makes sense. So that's kind of an overview. Um, platonic touch is not sexual touch. Um, it is like the word platonic implies. We all know what that means. It means friendly. It means non-sexual. And it is a different kind of thing. So in our society, so I'm going to talk about um, the society that I live in right now. So some of you may be in different places, um, but the society that I am f most familiar with is the U.S. So I've been in a lot of different places in the U.S. and I have pretty good sense um, of what it is. And also, um, yeah, so in the U.S., um, there is massive misunderstanding and um, miscomprehension of touch. Somebody's giving me lots of hearts. Oh, that's Serena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we in the U.S. are still very much stuck in the puritanical fear of touch. Um, there is this puritanical vibe that touch is sex and sex is touch and they're the same thing and that sex is bad. So this has created a situation where in our society there is far less touch than in many other societies um, in the planet. Now granted the U.S. is not as um, repressed in terms of touch as other places. It's definitely a spectrum. Um, I have, and I don't want to name names because it really isn't important to this conversation, but I've been, um, I've spent time with different cultural groups and they're much more repressed than the U.S. So it's kind of a spectrum. Um, but I hope that this conversation plays a part in helping us as a society move towards more of an open, um, more of a wise and loving approach to touch because honestly the way that our U.S. society views touch is not loving for the most part. It is very repressed and um, we have some work to do. <laughs> we have some work to do. So. I'm coming at this conversation um, as someone who used to be extremely repressed. I did not have cool hippie parents by any means. I had very strict religious parents. And um, I remember um, when I was 29 or something, 28 or 29, something like that, I went to this gathering. It was for... Um, it was like a sexual, like, uh, tantra workshop day thing. I can't even honestly remember what the specific title of it was, but I went and I was in this workshop and I was sitting next to this gorgeous woman who would eventually become my girlfriend, but I didn't know it at the time. And what we were supposed to do is pair up with the person we were sitting next to and spend half an hour, all we were supposed to do is we would like take turns and go back and forth and just touch each other's arm with our index finger. 
So I spent like 15 minutes just taking my finger and just rubbing it on her arm. That was the boundary. It could only be the arm. I think it was just the forearm too and just the index finger. And the aim was to, to give pleasure and connect with the person that you're with. <clears throat> and then they would do it to you back. And then the person who was receiving it was just supposed to be open to the experience and just feel whatever they were feeling. And I remember feeling such deep joy and bliss in that moment. And it was blowing my mind because previous to that, um, the kinds of touch that I shared with people um, that were geared towards sensuality always had a sexual element too. But this really um, was such a simple thing and it wasn't meant to be <sighs> sexual. It was meant to be healing and nourishing and life-giving and pleasurable and friendly, those things. And it I remember just leaving that workshop feeling like I just a whole different person, really. Um, so that was my introduction to platonic touch, what I call platonic touch. Um, there's other terms that we could use for what we're talking about here. We could say, um, we could say platonic intimacy. Um, my friend Anthony earlier today on Facebook pointed me towards a great resource. Um, it's a Facebook page that has articles and videos about platonic intimacy. Same thing. Um, of what I'm talking about here with platonic touch. Um, we could also call it cuddles with friends. We could call it healing touch. We could call it um, a lot of different things. Um, we could call it a romantic friendship. I love that term too. That's a fun one. Um, but in our society, we don't have, in general, we don't have a good way of exploring um, we don't understand the nuances of different kinds of energies and different kinds of relationships with people. <clears throat> we have a very black and white view of touch and relationships and sexuality. Um, when I was getting ready to do this Facebook Live, I kept posting pictures of people cuddling on a bench because I live um, in a place, I live just a minute's walk to this beautiful river and right along this river there's this scenic sort of touristy um it's cute though touristy area near these rapids and there's these beautiful benches spaced along the river one by one by one and it's interesting because i've been thinking a lot about the assumptions that I even catch myself making when I see two people cuddling or, you know, like all snuggled up um, in each other's arms on the bench. My mind often automatically labels that as, oh, they're married. Oh, they're a couple. Even my mind, and I've been working for years to train myself and decondition myself out of making these assumptions, and I still have that automatic um, knee-jerk mental labeling that kind of just happens. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, about a month or so ago, a good friend of mine, <laughs> she came to visit me one day, and we spent the most glorious day. Um, we spread out a blanket under the sun right by the river and um, right by the benches. We weren't on the bench, but we were in that area. And we spent like two or three hours just giving each other massages and playing with each other's hair, like just like touching each other's faces really gently and softly and just stroking, you know, the eyebrows and the nose and the shoulders and um, hugging, laying on the blanket, whispering to each other, sharing stories, laughing, crying in silence. You know, um, <laughs> when we were done, we stood up and 
when we laughed that we felt completely drunk. Like we could barely walk back to my apartment. We were stumbling around <laughs> because we had so much oxy, um, oxytocin running in our systems. Um, so oxytocin is a chemical that the brain produces uh, in different circumstances and situations. Um, some of the big, big ones are during touch, skin to skin contact. The brain produces oxytocin. Um, during labor, when a woman gives birth, a huge amount of oxytocin is produced in the brain. Um, during yoga, during meditation, um, it's also known as the cuddle hormone or the um, love hormone. And it just brings basically a sense of peace, harmony, connection, calm, love, bliss, joy. I mean, it's literally the best drug that we can do. Literally. <clears throat> it is, um, I guess, I read an article today that scientists were trying to figure out a way to, like, Put it in a pill or something but they can't figure it out because um, it has to be produced naturally in the brain or it um they figured out that they could replicate it in like a vet like a injection serum but it had to be uh shot into like such a specific area of the brain that was so hard to like get the angle right or something that you could make a mistake and totally mess it up and i guess cause problems so they were saying like it's just not practical to they haven't figured it out yet, um, how to create it, but they, in the article it said that if it did exist, that they had this, it in pill form or something, that it would be, like, everyone would want it. Um, it would, yeah, it would help humanity so much. But um, oxytocin is the love hormone, and it's produced when we have skin-to-skin -skin human contact. And... I, I've become increasingly interested in this conversation because in our U.S., United States society, there's this idea that we can only have prolonged physical contact with our partner, lover, spouse, <clears throat> or our children, like if you're breastfeeding or if you're cuddling your child, or, um, that those are really the only appropriate times for that or if like you're a kid you know kids are excused from this whole thing but there are these rigid societal codes that basically say <clears throat> that um you know if you hold hands with someone for a prolonged period of time then you must have sexual feelings for them or you must want to engage sexually with them um that's what our society says our society also puts things in hierarchies that cuddling and long hugging is considered not as desirable as intercourse um, or genital sex, that the cuddling and the hugging is like what you have to do to get to the next step. So it's kind of like, it's fun, but it's not like the real deal, right? Because that's the important part is the fucking, right? So we have that, um, we have that idea very strong in our mainstream um, culture. But what if it was possible to engage in cuddling so you and your pal sitting together on the couch, arms around each other, heads on each other's shoulders or lap, stroking each other's hair, giving each other foot massages, even kissing each other on the cheek in a sweet, friendly, sweet, mm, playful way. What if you could do that like for like three or four hours? <laughs> Would that be better than watching a movie? Would that be better than eating ice cream? Would that be better than most things you can think of? And for most of us, the answer would be yes. I know there's some of us. I don't want to make generalizations here. There's some of us who don't enjoy touch. And that's fine. 
Um, but I have to say that based on my life experience and research that I've done, um, a good majority of people do love, love, love touch. So um, science and psychology circles uh, actually created a term for when we are deprived of human contact, and that's called um, skin hunger. They've actually coined a term, skin hunger, which is an apt way of putting it because it, it describes how it feels. Um, for me, I thrive on constant, a constant supply of touch from friends. Um, I'm a single woman. I live alone right now. And I know that I value deeply so much when I get to see my friends and we have long, long, genuine hugs. Um, and I feel like that skin hunger, I can feel it start to dissolve as I'm hugging. I'm just like, oh. And fortunately, I have the kind of friends who I can hug as long as I want, usually, and they're not going to be weirded out. But I can remember back even just not too many years ago, um, when I was in grad school, um, having most of my friends be the kind of friends um, who, you know, do you ever hug someone and they just kind of like do it half-heartedly? It's like they're like, they give you that little pat and they kind of like stick their arms way out and so you're not even really fully touching like chest to chest and then, or like, <laughs> remember, funny story, I had this friend, she was a dear friend of mine. Um, <laughs> she, I remember that she... We, I used to hang out with her and her husband and then my husband at the time. We do like double date things. And I remember that they were very, very, um, we'll just say uptight folks. And I remember that she would give my husband these hugs when she would see him. But they were like the most pathetically half-hearted hugs. And I remember that she would stick her, she would kind of like come in her body like this. But then the bottom half was like way out. So she would like pull back her like crotch <laughs> as far and butt as far back from his body as possible. Almost like she was leaning forward like a crazy yoga move, straining forward so that like no sexual areas would even come anywhere near my husband. And I remember like kind of thinking that that was just like really sad um, that she had so much tension and fear inside of her. Um, especially about him because he is a very non-threatening person. So, but a lot of people are like that. Um, there's a lot of people like that. But I think that things are changing. Tides are turning. People are talking. Things are shifting right now. Um, and I had a, a friend on Facebook earlier today who was saying, uh, I think her name was Victoria. She was saying that the tides are turning and if given the right situations, and given the go-ahead, people will engage in platonic touch. You just have to give them permission, basically, and make sure they understand it's okay. For example, cuddle parties. Cuddle parties are becoming a big thing. Um, you can host an event where you invite people you trust and... Um, and I'll get more into this later in a future um, conversation because this is more nuanced. But you basically, the sole intention of the gathering is to have safe platonic touch cuddles. Um, the cuddle, pro cuddler, pro cuddling um, is a hugely fast growing profession. Um, as soon as I posted the information about this conversation um, happening on Facebook. Someone that I didn't really know, but um, he was, a, I forget his name, but he was a professional cuddler. And he had such cute pictures on his Facebook. He was like, he looked like a giant teddy bear. He was probably like 50 years old. And he was just like, and he was a professional cuddler. And he had all these posts about loving touch. And oh my God, it was so cute. Um, but you can get certified as a, excuse me, my water on the ground here. You can get certified as a professional cuddler, which I think is amazing. Um, and then there's some of us who are just, <laughs> we just do it with our friends. 
Um, there's no money exchange involved. But one of the reasons that I'm having this conversation, and I really want to say thank you to my friend Keith right now. Keith, thank you so much because um, we both have been talking a lot lately about how if more people knew that it was an option to seek out friendships with people who were open to platonic touch, that so much depression, anxiety, suffering would be alleviated. Um, people pay a lot of money to go get massages when all what they really need is just touch. People pay really good money to, I'm going to say, um, get sex in a way from women who are not engaging in the spiritual aspect of sex um, because what they really are hungering for is intimacy. For someone to look deeply into their eyes and say, I see you, to hold them, to be with them, to be present with them. So many men pay for sex in a way that is demeaning towards women because they don't know that there's other options. There is how many senior citizens in senior homes where they barely get any visitors and maybe once a day they get a pat on the shoulder or something. Maybe not even that, you know. And they would just be so overjoyed to get a long hug from their friend. But maybe they don't know how to ask for it. And maybe people don't know how to give it. I really started thinking about these issues when I um, got into Reiki healing and I started to see how disconnected people are from their bodies. Um, I was talking about how about people being disconnected from their bodies with a good friend a couple weeks ago and she was telling me the story. She's a Reiki healer too. She was telling me the story about a woman that she was working with who was um, like eight months pregnant and didn't know it. Because she was so disconnected from her body that she couldn't even feel the life inside of her. Now, I live in a place right now, part a geographic part of the United States that I feel is extremely repressed in terms of um, understanding the different options for healing, especially when it comes to touch. Um, I I recently um, befriended a lady, an older lady. And she, um, she told me, I said, what do you do for a living? And she said, massage, but not that kind of massage. Like right away, that was what she said. Like I just met her and she said, but not that massage. I was like, what? Like, that's not where my brain goes. I don't, I don't think of massage in any negative way, but, but in Northwest Ohio, a lot of people do. So I'm not here to bash Northwest Ohio. I love Northwest Ohio. This is my home. Um, but I am just wanting to speak out about um, let's, let's see if we can help each other to heal. Maybe we don't need to pay a bunch of money to get a massage when maybe there's a friend that we can call and say, hey, guess what? This is what I need. Would you like the same thing? Let's talk about it and just see if we can meet our needs together. There's a lot of depressed, anxious energy going on in the world, and maybe we can easily, and I say easily because it is easy once you get over the initial fear of it, um, we can easily help each other, help ourselves. That's the power, you know? Um, this country uh, is full of people who are very... Mm. who believe very strongly in their own depression as something that will always be there, that it's a, a, an incurable imbalance in the brain only temporarily alleviated by antidepressants. When, 
perhaps there's other things going on and there's other ways to heal it. And I know that's true. So we talked about the definition platonic touch versus sexual touch. And we talked about um, you know, our society and how it kind of makes these things a little difficult to enact these healing methods. Um, so let's talk about what some of the benefits could be of platonic touch. So platonic touch, let's talk about from a spiritual point of view. What could be some of the benefits? So let's say that I'm cuddling with a friend on the couch and we are locked in a, in a lovely embrace and we're breathing together and we're listening to music and we're just feeling so peaceful and I genuinely love my friends so much and so I just start to give them a neck massage and I just start to go out of my way a little bit to um, to give them some really nice touch some massagey kind of touch and it's nothing I have to do because we were fine just sitting there and just kind of like resting in the embrace but I just have this natural impulse within me because um, I can feel that they have maybe just a little bit of tension in their shoulders or neck. I can just kind of sense it. So I just automatically start helping them out with it. And they're like, oh, thank you. Wow, that feels so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That selfless giving that just naturally arises was able to arise through that intimacy of the platonic touch. So by getting into a situation where we have this prolonged contact sitting there on the couch, that boundary, that perceived separation, seeming separation of me versus you, we're separate beings, that starts to dissolve through that prolonged contact. So the oxytocin is flowing through the brain, we're getting extremely relaxed um, any stressors that we may have had may have had throughout the day that uh, releases cortisol and adrenaline in our system that's all being washed and cleansed away the oxytocin cleanses all of those other negative stress hormones and we're just feeling so good so that separation then begins to dissolve on a spiritual level and we begin to like intuitively sense more things about the other person because there is less and less of a, a separation between us and then we literally become one person now most people think about the idea of becoming one as through um, typical sex um, you know the idea of like the Spice Girl song when to become one that song <laughs> that I loved when I was in middle school um, we have this idea of like sex as being the ultimate way to bond with someone, to become two, to become one. But that's not the only way you can do it. There's so many ways. I mean, I do that through Reiki with people all the time. Um, and that's a touch method. Um, but you can do this. You can reach that state of oneness through prolonged physical contact with another human. You just, I mean, I'm telling you, you hold hands with someone for long enough and you really start to merge with them. So it's this spiritual oneness that you start to feel. And then through that oneness, you have this natural impulse that arises within you to just help the other person. It's this very deep bond that's created. Because here's an example, um, and this is, this is a very um, simple one. But so if you burn your hand in a fire you go, ouch, and you pull your hand back, and the other hand just naturally holds it. And maybe you even just like hold it up to your face. So your other hand is naturally comforting and helping to heal this hand that was burnt. 
because it, this hand knows that this hand is the same, that it's all one, it's all part of the same thing. So this hand doesn't ever say thank you to this hand. This hand doesn't need a thank you. This hand just naturally, effortlessly comforts and soothes this hand. And that's the way it is with our friends. We have these deep bonds, and when we form these really deeper and deeper connections through platonic touch, through intentional, loving, compassionate touch, then we really can give to each other. And it's effortless. It's easy. The people in my life that I can most easily give to, where it doesn't even seem like giving at all, are the people, typically, that I have shared very in touch, intense, um, beautiful touch experiences with. And they're, most of them are not sexual. They're either Reiki-related or um, platonic touch, cuddling with friends. To me, you know, I give stuff away all the time to these people, and I don't care, and they're sometimes surprised, like, why are you giving me this thing? Don't you want it? No, it's yours. I don't care. Just take it. It's just an object. I don't care. Because we're the same. We're one, and I can really feel that really easily. So I definitely think that um, a lot of the people um, who are running this country are very ignorant of these things and if they aren't ignorant then they are going out of their way to suppress this information because if it was known that um, for example we could receive huge bursts of this love hormone this, this oxytocin through cuddling with our friends what would happen to the sales of all these drugs that we take for depression, for bipolar, for ADHD, for all these things, what would happen? Oh, they would go down. They would go down. So that's um, a spiritual benefit of platonic touch is this um, loosening of boundaries between people and this merging and then this selfless giving. On a physical level, I already talked about some of the benefits. Um, you can look up, there's lots and lots of research out there now about um, all the negative impacts that stress has on the body um, in terms of the production of cortisol and adrenaline. It, those hormones basically eat away at your body. They like eat at the bones and the tissues. I think this is why people get like fibromyalgia and thing, um, chronic fatigue stuff um, because of just stress and those constant hormones going on. Um, that's my opinion, my personal opinion. I'm not a doctor. Okay. But um, so we live in this really effed up society, <laughs> okay, where our food is polluted, our water is polluted. We deal with sound pollution. We don't see enough trees. We don't walk barefoot on the ground. There's so many things that we're fighting against and dealing with um, that create stress in our bodies. Oxytocin, oxytocin, this love chemical, um, heals and reverses all of these things. I honestly think that the best medicine that a person can get is a really good hug. I honestly can't think of anything better. I really can't. And not even like the most healthy food or um, the most pleasurable sexual experience. No, honestly, I think a very genuine heartfelt hug where you know that the other person isn't going to pull away. They'll let you hug them as long as you need just to be held as long, as long, as long as you need. That, that is healing. And it's without words in our society. I mean, I'm sitting here, I have all these words. Blah, 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 blah. But have you ever experienced the feeling I'm just holding someone's hand in silence? 
and you just have this contentment in your heart and this peace surrounding you. And typically that's only done with a lover or a spouse. Why? Why? There's so much richness that can be had. And even in many spiritual circles, you know, um, there is still these preconceived notions about touch and judgments that people make. I, um, I deal with a very weird, tricky situation in that I'm, on the one hand, trying to create a reputation for myself as someone trustworthy and loving and compassionate who has a, who has a business that's a spiritual business and yet I find myself analyzing about how I'm acting in public am I causing people to think certain things about me and is it going to interfere with my other messages or my other intentions or aims it's very confusing sometimes so this um, turmoil within me I decided pretty recently um, that this is a topic this platonic touch topic is something that I want to go into more because it scares even me to go into it publicly. So if it scares me, and I've broken a lot of taboos in my life, let me tell you. <laughs> Wrote a book about polyamory and done many a thing that, um, that are against most people's ideas of what is moral. All in the sake of spiritual awakening. But it does. It still kind of scares me. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. So, yes, we can have very close bonds with people on a physical level that is not sexual. And in future um, videos, I'm going to talk about how to deal with sexual energy if it does come up. Because sometimes it comes up and then you deal with it. Because we're adults and we can figure it out. I think there's this... Um, in our society, there's this idea of like, it's very, again, very black and white. It's like you either run towards sexual energy with 100% of your determination, I must have sex with this person, or you literally run away from it with all of your power because it scares the shit out of you for different reasons. <coughs> I, um, I think I would, I do believe I was reading a book. Uh, I think it was Healing Trauma by Peter Levine. Fantastic book. Oh my gosh, so good. And he actually addresses um, the topic of sexual trauma and sexual abuse in the book. And forgive me if I'm thinking of the wrong book, but I'm pretty sure this is the book. Um, but he talks about how sexual molestation is actually mostly fueled by fear of it. So he basically says that, um, for example, let's say a father is accidentally walks in on his daughter when she's changing or something and she's a teenager and then he gets sexual feelings. He will be so ashamed of that, so mortified, so shocked, so appalled, so disgusted by himself that he pu immediately pushes the feelings down, represses them, denies them, hates himself pushes them away or runs basically pushes or runs it's this intense aversion reaction but then over time as those feelings keep coming back in various stages and moments it's like this poison that insidiously comes in and then in a moment of basically blind intensity the father then acts on those feelings that have been bubbling up inside that he hasn't wanted to look at and just honestly admit that he's feeling. So the idea is um, sexual trauma in part is a lot caused by our fears of sex. 
that if we can just look at these things, then they can be addressed with love and compassion. There's, um, but definitely in our society, not everyone is ready for these conversations. But I think that these people here that I'm, you know, the, the, all of us here are ready to talk about these things and talk about them with our loved ones and, um, really start to explore within ourselves what is going on. Hmm. Yes. Um, so emotional, um, benefit of platonic touch. It's pretty obvious. You know, we talked about spiritual benefit and physical benefit, emotional benefit. I mean, just greater feelings of well-being and connection. Um, there's so many, um, studies done about animals that when they're in seclusion, they can get really sick and die. Um, you know, much earlier than the animals that are, um, caged or put near or live near other animals. Um, we are the same. We're humans. We're animals too on the physical level. So there is this like emotional component of life that, um, I think sometimes we forget about, um, that to feel like you're part of something like a tribe or a family or a network of friends is so crucial to our well-being. Um, to feel like we're a part of something. I mean, you may have been hearing some loud sounds um, during this broadcast today because uh, it's a weekend here in Grand Rapids, Ohio, and all the bikers come out, all the bikers. So, like, you constantly are hearing these bikers coming down the street, um, and they're so cute. They have their club, you know. They wear their leather, and they've got their attitude and they go to the biker bar down the street and they um, they just have like a certain way about them and you can tell who they are when you just look at them really quick you glance oh there's the bikers and I'm sure they look at me and they think oh there's the hippie you know um, but they're they have this emotional bond that connects them and it gives them a sense of purpose and belonging and togetherness and that's what I have with all of you here so um, it's important to remember that our emotional health is extremely important to <coughs> the spiritual journey as well. We learn who we are through interacting with others. And when we can find like-minded others who can help us to refine who we are and um, help us to manifest our best selves, then that is incredible. That is ideal. Um, so I wanted to see if y'all... Oh, wow. I've been talking for 55 minutes. It's 5.55. That's a very auspicious number. Um, does anyone here have any comments or questions that you would like me to address right now? Speak up if you do, please. Um, Sana says, I have a friend that I cuddled with and we called each other beyond friends. Beyond friends. I like that. Yeah, because the simple label friend isn't quite cutting it. Um, so it's more than friends but maybe not partner or, um, like girlfriend or, or whatever. Uh, yeah. Labels can get confusing because it's like, how do we explain to other people what other people mean to us? Um, and sometimes we, yeah, we can create our own labels and concepts. Um, so Sana, I really like that you created your own label for what that friendship is. I think that's awesome. Yeah, when we can use words in creative ways to um, to bring awareness to the nuances of life in ways that make sense to us and kind of break out of society's standard boxes and like bring the color to the black and white world, <laughs> you know? So I love that. That goes along so well with um, breaking the 
the taboos of touch because um, you're engaging with your friend in a way that is not typical in our society and quite rebellious in a lovely way. So thank you, Sana, for that comment. I appreciate that. What else do we have here? Um, oh, Sana asked a question as well. Um, will you be talking about consent in a further discussion? Yes. Um, that will be part two or part three. Um, I haven't decided quite yet, but yes, that will be coming. Um, consent, how to create a safe space, how to set boundaries, how to have clear communication. Yes, yes, yes. And I was planning on doing all of this in one day. And then I was like, there's no way I can talk about all this in one conversation. So that's coming. So I just today wanted to lay the ground rules, um, define it, platonic touch and kind of just ground us into this topic. So yes, it's coming. It's coming. Forgive me, I I need water. Um, Keith. Keith says, What about building a pool of names to develop a club slash group of like minded people for this subject? That's a good idea. Let's do it. Um, yeah, um, I'll, I'll sit with that and see how that emerges. Maybe we could start like a Facebook group or something and then have, I don't know, something. Um, I don't know, or maybe something like this already exists, uh, possibly already. I don't know. Were you thinking more like... A virtual group like across the globe or were you thinking more um, local what were you thinking Keith um, but that is a really good idea and I think that these um, live conversations that we're having is a good starting point to kind of see who's wanting to keep talking about this issue um, so yeah I like that if you have more thoughts on that I want to hear it so, um, very cool. Um, does anyone else have any questions or thoughts about it, about what we're talking about? <clears throat> um, let me talk a little bit about what's coming up. So, the next two Sundays... Are going to be part two and part three so um, I believe August 26th yeah next Sunday it's gonna be part two of this conversation and then part three will be September 2nd part three so it'll be three parts um, and it'll be the same time so 5 p.m. Eastern daylight time here in the US um, will hopefully um, be able to have just as good of a conversation um, next week. I know we will. So, hmm, I invite you to those conversations as well. And please, um, if this conversation was meaningful to you and helped you in some way, please, please, please share this broadcast on social media um, if you know you're on YouTube, click share, please, because the more people that we can get um, to participate in these kinds of conversations, the better off we all will be. So thank you for doing your part. And thank you for tuning in today. Um, it's been a really beautiful experience talking about this, and I feel... A very cert, cert, a certainty within me that this is aligned with my mission as a healer, someone who is healing myself as well as others. So, all this talk, and now I want to cuddle. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. <clears throat> all right, friends. 
Namaste. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being everything you are. I love you.